All right, I see it's been about two years since we were all together. Did anything happen while I was away? Just same old, same old? Okay, well, let's just continue. We're, we're going up Cow Creek today, uh, where John Baker and I witnessed 63 pounds of 8 Troy ounces eventually being taken out of the crack. This was the biggest gold strike that I witnessed personally other than the ones that uh, I made and others made on the Umpqua. Uh, you all know that I took six pounds out of a crack. Uh, we had other strikes as well in the two to four pound range, but by far this was the largest uh, gold strike I ever saw coming out of one place. Now Cow Creek is southwest of the town of Myrtle Creek and it feeds into the South Umpqua right at the small town of Riddle and we'll be basing our operations from Riddle. Now some believe that as much as 70 percent of those gold flakes that you're finding on the Umpqua in our video sites emanate from Cow Creek and this could be true. Uh, there, it is carrying a tremendous amount of gold in nugget form, which is ground up quickly due to the violence of Cow Creek and the spring melt. The reason Cow Creek carries so much gold is it makes a tremendous westward fetch through many of the north-south gold veins and then turns and makes an eastward stretch through the same gold veins again and empties just above Riddle. And the combined gold from Cow Creek exiting the eastern mountains and the South Umpqua exiting the western mountains has been deposited on the flat between Riddle and Myrtle Creek. The right arrow is the exit of the South Umpqua from the mountains onto the flat and the left arrow is the exit of Cow Creek from the mountains onto the flat. So much gold on the flat that you that are presently mining the gold flakes on the Umpqua at those sites are finding what simply sloughs off the small lip at Myrtle Creek. Now if you're one of the people who's actively mining the South Umpqua you're digging up the gold flakes in the uh, gravel bars and uh, behind the boulders, especially if you're bucketing up the, those mass flakes between behind Jacqueline and Boaz, the twin pillar boulders. Uh, there's no need for you to move. We don't generally leave gold to find gold. You're already making a strike. So I would recommend you just stay right where you are. While we're talking about that, uh, some people have said, have uh, made the observation that we had these old gold dredges. In a way, uh, those you are not hindered by those. Those gold dredges um, did not move the rocks. Those were stacked. We stacked those rocks underwater by hand. Uh, if you watch those films of me doing that 20 years ago, uh, you know, that, that was all done by hand. Uh, the gold dredge, the, the little nozzle, only is designed to, to get the loose material up. It needs 70% of water to work, and if you're sucking up rocks up through it, it's doing this number on the top of the surface, and every time it does, it's kicking out gold. They are highly inefficient compared to bucketing up the using the air compressors, as we've shown in the past, bucketing up the gold flakes and running them through whatever method you choose on on uh, dry land, because you can get a hundred percent out of it that way. The key is to get the gold in the first place, and one of the most important tools for that, getting gold out of a crack, is a shovel. Uh, specifically, a trenching shovel. That's what we use to get down and, and 
get the gold, and in some cases it was almost solid gold because as the river is, gold is coming down the river, it falls into a crack, it displaces, being heavier, rocks, pebbles, sand, whatever's in there, and it is just a tremendous sight when you see it. Cow Creek is not going to be like the Umpqua. You're not going to get immediate gratification when you dig into a bar and see those flakes and fine. Cow Creek gold is not bulk gold, it's nuggets sold by the piece, very valuable. And we're going to have to use our prospecting skills to look for drop zones where that gold could be. We're not going to know anything is there for sure until we dig down and find it. All right, I'm going to be giving you some GPS coordinates for the sites on Cow Creek. But the number that Google gives you, if you just click on it, is a decimal degree. You need to double click on that to get to a sidebar that will give you an east, west, north, south latitude longitude to make sense for your receiver. Of course, you could take that decimal degree, a Loran number or anything else, and take it to your systems page on your GPS and convert it so on the top is a decimal degree and on the bottom is what you need for your receiver. This has caused some confusion on our films in the past. Now we're going to be looking for areas where gold flakes and certainly nuggets can drop out and stick in cracks or behind boulders and the area between Beatty and Squaw Creeks is one of those where Cow Creek exits the mountain range. We can pinpoint our search areas to just those places where the streams enter the creek and look just upstream to the low pressure area where nuggets and other heavy materials will drop. If the stream itself is carrying anything, it will have its own drop zone just before it enters the creek. Now I've highlighted the various drop zones between Squaw and Beatty Creek, but this is nothing new to you. You've done all of this in our previous classes. Now if we can go to our satellite view and match up a suspected crack horizontal to the river flow with our drop zones, we may have a major strike on our hands. Something that proved useful to me back in the day was Delorme Topo. I had a GPS head attached to the computer and being driven down the river or creek, we call out head of the bar, tail of the bar, suspected crack, whatever it was, and I click that and it's right in the program. You could also click a portion of the stream and it would give you the suspected topography of the bottom so you could figure out your boil outs and your drop zones. Well, I've just showed you a number of ways to target a tremendous number of drop zones in a hurry. Now you can go up Cow Creek looking for cracks and you want cracks, of course, to go in this direction across so it'll catch your gold just like a sluice box with. And this is where you find, you're going to find your very richest um, strikes. Now you know from your training we're looking for east-west orientations of creeks and Beatty Creek itself has many of them. They're at extreme relief, which allows for deep cutting into the ground, and it may be worth your while to explore Beatty Creek. The one thing I can't tell you is the status of active claims on Cow Creek since the BLM website is down as I'm filming this, but I'm going to give you all the information to figure it out. In 1791, Thomas Jefferson picked a meridian and divided the United States into six mile squares called township and ranges to prepare 
for the induction of all the lands from the French we would get, indeed the West. Each six-mile square can now be divided into 36 one-mile squares called sections. On a map, the one-mile sections are read from the top right, number one, to the left, number six, you drop down and then read them from the left to the right until you end at 36. We can now divide each one mile section into acreages since a one mile square is 640 acres. We would do this to either file a claim or describe where our house is on a map. The system is very much used today. For your purpose today, you need to know what are the active claims in the one mile section of Cow Creek that you're in. Luckily, there are some websites that lay the township and ranges on top of Google Maps so you will know exactly the information you need to find out what active claims are in the section you're looking for. And in this case, for the Squaw and Beatty Creek area, we would be looking for Section 31, Township 30, South, Range 6, West. If you've had any trouble keeping up, you should know many of the people using this video have been with us for over 20 years. Some began as kids when Gene Wiley and I began teaching a four-hour prospecting course in gymnasiums and auditoriums to the middle school and high school crowd. Why prospecting? Well, as a prospector, you're basically on a worldwide treasure hunt all your life, and you can be prospecting for anything once you learn the basics. Prospectors were whittling down vast areas into exact locations to take out just the pure product. We don't necessarily have to dig big holes or operate huge machinery to have success. We can be hired by others to find substances and we can file our own now proven mining claims and sell them as real estate. So there's many reasons to be a prospector. In 2000, Gene and I joined others out west to teach thousands at public events. And when a startup video service was invented, I immediately put our courses online, along with my gemstone prospecting and cutting videos. And Connie pitched in to teach people how to wire wrap creations into stunning jewelry and launched any number of jewelry businesses across the world. So all of this is available to you free by simply going to the main page and pulling out whatever it is you need or typing in my name or Connie's name and gold or gemstones or jewelry in any search engine on the planet. Simply pull out what you need. Good luck with your prospecting and teach somebody something new today.